Hi there, and welcome to Penn Central 99's channel. I'm Terry, and this is my River Mountain Model Railroad. It's the very last day of April in 2016, so I thought I would put together a quick video to kind of bring you up to speed what's been going on. Um, there's a whole lot of other things in life going on right now. Haven't had a lot of time to dedicate to the modeling part of model railroading, uh, but let's go ahead and get started. For starters, I think most of you have heard about Mike Jensen over at KU4PC passing away um, last month due to cancer. I know a couple of people have put some videos together in tribute to Mike, which I think was a very cool idea, especially since he was a great modeler. Uh, he did some fantastic scenery work. I didn't think um, you know, it would be uh, appropriate for me to put yet another video together, but what I'd like to do is, since this is my monthly update, in uh, honor of Mike and the great modeling and scenery work that he did. Just a, a 10 second moment of silence uh, for Mike and uh, some of the great things that he did for the model railroading community. I know it's the last day of April and I'm a little bit behind on my uh, every other month update for uh, you guys and my subscribers, uh, but honestly, I've been trying to put together a video for the past couple of weekends. It's just that I've been preoccupied with other things. Uh, I'm trying to build a patio onto the house. Actually, I'm not trying. I am building a patio onto the house. Uh, my wife and I have spent a lot of um, time over the past couple of weekends uh, building it ourselves. It's going to look pretty cool. Uh, when it's done. Uh, but fortunately for you, um, it's raining today. I know, believe it or not, Las Vegas, Nevada, um, it's raining. It's been raining two out of the past three days, so can't work outside on the patio today, so here I am putting a video together for you. Uh, one of the first things I want to talk about is some purchases uh, that I've made over the past couple of months. There's not a whole lot of them, but they're kind of unique to me. And uh, some of the other thing that we're going to talk about is uh, some scenery materials that I've been able to literally dig up. Okay, let's talk about purchases real quick. Um, one item that I picked up over the past couple of months, you can see here is the uh, Vintage Dairy Queen kit from Walther's. Uh, they just came out with this a couple of months ago. And actually the, uh, the footprint and the design of uh, this particular Dairy Queen uh, models or mimics a uh, custard shop back in the Midwest that I used to frequent. So I am actually going to uh, model that after a uh, frozen custard stand back in the Midwest. And like I say, the footprint and the, um, the design of it uh, mirrors that uh, pretty close. Uh, it's not going to be a Dairy Queen. I'm going to name it something else. But uh, there's one purchase for the month. Uh, the other thing that I purchased I don't know if it shows up too well. Uh, I bought some Intermountain 4750 covered hopper kits. Uh, they just uh, reintroduced or came out with those, these a couple of months ago. I've actually had um, my order reserved or my reservation in for probably the past year or whatever. Uh, but uh, these two kits came in. And I think most of you know or are aware that um, I'm <clears throat> trying to step up my game when it comes to modeling and weathering. So I thought I would buy some uh, plain, undecorated uh, 4750 covered hopper kits so that I can weather them and model them after some uh, prototypes that I've From seen. From a track standpoint, as you can see, I've started to install some track here. Uh, this is the uh, dusty flats area of the River Mountain Model Railroad. You can see I've got a crossing in there uh, that's going to come off of the inner loop. Uh, this line here is going to go back to a uh, LPG or propane plant and this line here is going to go to a grain facility. Uh, like I say, I just started to put some track down and uh, get some things squared away in preparation of uh, trying to get a couple of scenes going. But like I said earlier, just uh, there's been other things going on. haven't had a lot of time uh, for the modeling part of model railroading. From a scenery standpoint, um, I was able to uh, literally dig up some scenery materials on my own. Um, 
I saw a video a couple of years ago, I watched somebody do this. Basically, you go out in the dirt and you dig, and then uh, you take a series of strainers or screens and start filtering down and filtering out the different sizes and uh, keeping what you uh, you save. In this first bin here, and I will give you a close-up of it, uh, this is actually a Woodland Scenics uh, ballast. It is the medium gray blend ballast. Uh, this metal one here I went in my backyard and uh, dug up a couple of, or not even a half a bucket of, uh, of dirt and was able to uh, get some brown material for scenery. And this right uh, one over here has actually got a reddish brown tint to it. Um, a short drive from the house and a couple hundred feet walk into the desert and I was able to get that uh, reddish brown material. So I'm going to start using my own ballast here uh, for scenery here on the layout. And uh, let me give you a close-up of this stuff. Like I say, um, I just uh, dug this up on my own. The, this one here is uh, Woodland Scenics that you buy commercially. Like I say, that's the, the medium gray blend ballast. Uh, this material here I dug up in my backyard. Um, Actually, that dirt uh, came out of the holes that I dug to set the post for the patio. And this one over here, like I say, this was a short drive from the house and walk in the desert a couple hundred feet. Uh, get me some of that material. I was able to uh, buy a couple of uh, strainers and some screens. I actually got four different sizes of uh, material out of these two colors here. Uh, real quick over here, you can see... Uh, the, uh, the used uh, or leftover uh, Woodland Scenics empty containers and uh, some 20 ounce Gatorade bottles that uh, was able to find or refine it down into four different sizes. Uh, but from a scenery standpoint, it's actually a lot of fun. It takes a couple hours to do, but I think it's a lot of cost, more cost effective than buying the stuff commercially. I know some people uh, buy stuff off of Arizona Rock versus Woodland Scenics. Well, this is my Nevada rock, so, and I think it's pretty cool, and I think it's going to look pretty good. And just to give you an idea of what this uh, ballast that I'm finding in my backyard looks like, uh, there's a couple of dirt piles that I put in uh, from the ballast that I found in the backyard. Uh, there's a brown dirt pile. Some of the, uh, the red material that I found and used... Uh, there's some of that red. Uh, what I did is I, uh, I'm using that red there in the middle of the track to simulate some spillage. Uh, like came out of a, a bin or the hopper. And uh, actually using that as a, uh, a marking point that lets me know that at the halfway mark on that center track there on that siding so that I can spot cars. But here's the... See if I can get this to focus for you. So the one on the right here is the red and the one on the left is the brown and there you can see that uh, the color variation, the texture and the size versus the woodland scenic stuff is, I think that's pretty damn close and I paid nothing for that. I just spent a few hours in the yard uh, sifting it through some screens. Well that's pretty much it for this video update. Um, thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, you know, I really appreciate uh, all you people watching and all the subscribers that I have. Uh, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel. Uh, so thanks again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for tuning in. Until then, stay safe.